ladies and gentlemen and anyone else on any kind of spectrum there. How are you doing tonight? Welcome to uh, Tabletop Tuesdays. We're going for the second day of D&D of the week with the We Really Need to Find a Better Team Name D&D Beginners. Hi everyone. <laughs> Yay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, we are pretty much picking up we're pretty much picking up uh, where we left off last week, so they've done really well, actually, I've got to be honest, they've done everything pretty much as well as they could do. They managed to survive the goblins, they <laughs> managed to track them to their lair, they have managed to kill the leader of said lair. They have a few more bits to explore, even though one of them did feel the need to flood the rest of the place, for well reasons done, he only knows. <laughs> well, <I'll... laughs> hey, it helped. <laughs> It may well have helped. Shit. Yeah. Um, Based on the conversation we had earlier, Sean, do you want to clarify what level we are? Because <laughs> I'm not a teacher. Okay. So, there. so, for people at home, there were lots of questions asked last week about how they were able to tank some of the shit they were able to tank. Um, I'm not going to reveal full classes because there are some secrets in here. But, um, essentially what we've got is we've got a set of level 3 heroes. Um, so they are a little bit OP for this point in the game because this game is designed for level 1s. So I've upped the stats of enemies a fair bit um, and put more in. Um, and yeah, so we have got a Elven Ranger slash question mark. We have got a... Whoa, now. Nah. <laughs> a Dwarven Paladin. We've got a female Tiefling Sorcerer. And we've got a male human question mark warlock <laughs> he looks very human at the moment he wasn't human last time these guys saw him um, Caliban is blissfully unaware of all yeah. this yeah. Caliban who has joined this group and is just like I don't know any of you people but I will kill all the things for fun goblin jam goblin jam, goblin jam. <laughs> it really was poor goblin on his 2 HP Taking off full, massive, almost crit hit to the face. That was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so when we start tonight, we're basically kicking back into the party. I've had a short rest. They've, you know, after the battle, they kind of chilled for 20 minutes, looked through the the, uh, the loot of the room a little bit, decided what they were going to do, took some of the things out of um, Karg's treasure chest. And we are going there to... There was one... Yeah? What, one thing is part of that short rest... I realised I basically kicked the body to look for the cloak that vanished. Didn't actually loot him in general. <laughs> During that short rest, can I see if he's got anything else on him? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, so, cool. we'll start off with that then. <laughs> um, During that short rest, obviously, Warlock face. You have recovered everything, because Warlocks do that in a short rest. Oh, yeah. Um, on the bugbear, you find <laughs> a regular morning star. Yeah, not bothered. Nothing massively special about it. And um, some, like, half plate. It's... Both I of them will, are pretty crappy. We'll kind of offer them up to the, the room, as it were, and see if anyone... Is this of any use to anybody? Ah, oh, thank you. I think I'll take the Morning Star. By all means. Add it to my collection. Okay. No pouches or anything. Sadly not. Mind you, when you're in your crib and you've got a massive chest in the corner, you probably don't need to be carrying too much. <laughs> no. <laughs> on your on your person. No, you basically looted his uh, treasure chest, which is where most of his stuff was. Fair enough. Well, just to confirm before we go on, did anybody write down the stuff we found in the chest? I yep. know the dwarf's holding it. Okay. Yes, I did. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> so one of us knows what. <laughs> Uh, marvellous. Yep, the dwarf that none of you actually know is now carrying the party stuff, apparently. Um. <laughs> I'm not here for enough financial game. Okay? <laughs> You're so trusting. Well, no, but it's... I'm just here to find a man whose name I've... and I've now forgotten. Um, and get the hell out of here. Speaking of, while we are having our short rest, Maron looks over. I know that's what the name is. Tobias! <laughs> and yeah. smiles at him. So, 
What exactly happened there while we were fighting? I put um, a curse on one of them and you decided to stab him despite this? Me? So what was I supposed to do? Just let him walk off? Well, I don't know how you're... He was literally going to go for a swim and then I was going to flood the tunnel. He was not a problem at that point. Well, he's not a problem at this point, is he? Pose not. And at that point, I'm going to... Maron puts his hand to his face and as he pulls his hand away, the illusion taking hold of him disappears for a second. And you see before you pretty much the same facial hair. But otherwise, bright red skin, dark black horns on his head, where there were luxurious robes that didn't seem to take any wear and tear or any dirt on them. Suddenly there's very scruffy, thick, studded leather armor. And he grins back at the whole party. Are we ready to move on then? Well, thank you, Ku, for posting that lovely link. Oh, shit. He looks darker than I remember, man. Fuck. He's, he's yeah, he looked pretty before. It's a little menacing. <laughs> um, um, if people aren't in the oh, Twitch no, chat, I'll paste is. it in there for you, too. That looks familiar. Do I know him? Yes, yeah, right. I can't remember his name. I have no idea. I just literally searched for Tiefling and found the one that looked the closest. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So that's what... That's what um, Malon, Malon really looks like. Yeah, well, it's marvellous colour, kind of Malron. I do know we have met. <laughs> well, yes. We've been talking to each other friendly this whole time. I I don't prejudge. Well, oh, thank you. Unfortunately, many I, humans I, aren't quite I, the same. I don't particularly give a toss about you either way, so, you know, that doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it's it's just just even and like-minded. And at that point, I put my hand to my face again and the illusion takes back over. And I'm the Sorceress Supreme again. Great. Well, I feel... Anyway. At least you're not a goblin. Seeing how particularly well sure. than you are. They don't tend to smell very good. I haven't noticed. I wonder why. Anyway, Gundren. <laughs> yes? How draw. Oh, we're hitting the other one. I'm not. Maybe. Well, one or the, one or t'other, apparently, and ideally, like, Yondren. Let's hope he can swim when he's possibly, you know, chained. Oh, I don't think the water would have hit him. Every let's. other part of this cave seems to be above. Let's find out. <laughs> um, and if we've all finished the rest, Sean, I am going to walk. Not actually, I'm going to walk over to here and peer down. Are the wolves swimming or standing? Uh, the wolves are not there any longer. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> but is that entire area flooded? No, it looks like it is definitely soaking wet and there is a good amount of like a lot of the rubbish and trash that you had seen in that room is now gone also. It does look as if this room is sodden up to about halfway up. Like we're talking a good 10 feet or so of water, but then... Well, congratulations, Baron. You gave the place a good clear out and let loose to soggy, potentially... Well, oh. they won't be bothering us anymore. I don't mean their corpses are there, I mean they are gone. That sh should be something delightful for us to look at on the way out. I'm sure Across. if we need to find them, the Elfin Ranger can check them. See, as much as it was that they were my friends earlier when I fed them, I don't think they wanted a bath. But apparently you thought otherwise. So are we going to try and cross the bridge now then? Sounds good to me. Oh, yeah. Um, any subterfuge that we did have probably has fallen flat with the flood. Uh, let's have a look. Um, and with that, making my way out of the main room, hoping people are following me. Making my way downtown. <laughs> and... Walking fast, what was that? water is running and I'm home brown. 
<laughs> I'm going to get as far as the tunnel that the, the goblin ran out of. Yes. The one that leads to the bridge. Mm -hmm. And just looking down that route to see if there's anything coming this way. I'll show you exactly what you can see. You see no... Actually, roll me a perception. That may make a difference. <laughs> Dice rolls? I see a bunch of stuff. One little triangle. And that's what the layout of the place looks like that you can see. But as for actual creatures yeah. and stuff, that's a different question. Uh. Okay. Um, Nine. You can't see anything coming. You can see, essentially, the bridge leads to what looks to be a corridor carved out of the stone. Um, not, not crossing the bridge quite yet, but going to at least make my way as far as it and look over across again and see if anything is... nothing is making its way. Nope. Looks pretty, looks pretty clear. The bridge itself is quite rickety. It's a um, uh, rope and wood bridge. Not the best constructed, but you know, you saw the goblin walking back and forth across it earlier. No problem. We're slightly bigger than goblins. Um, <laughs> the bridge. If you would like so to check it, you can roll me and investigate. It's yeah. Just how far did that wall get up here? Um, it seems like like the underside of the bridge is dripping, but the the top of the bridge itself only seems marginally wet at best. So it splashed it, perhaps. Um, yeah, but I do actually want to investigate whether I think it's going to hold my weight. Five. You could prop. You could like you know backflip over this. It's, it's perfectly safe. <laughs> I'm not going to. Quickly enough. Um, uh, can try and make my way across it quietly to get to the other side. So I suppose you want to stealth now. Yes, please. If you're going quietly. Well, if nothing's coming our way just yet. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus Maybe. side, getting all these rolls out of the way now is probably a good thing. Well, maybe a good thing. Remind me how Roll20 is a completely random generator and therefore <laughs> each of those should have been... Oh, right. I'm pretty sure it just picks one player at random to fuck over. <laughs> I'm blissfully walking across the bridge thinking I am... Solid Snake, clearly. I am that good at what I do. You're surrounding with like a ninja. <laughs> you have like a six foot box over top of yourself. <laughs> But yeah, I'm walking across the bridge thinking I am the boss. There is absolutely no real issues. It sways. It does, obviously, every plank you step on does bow slightly under your weight. It's not designed for you, really, but they seem to hold you pretty pretty well. I'm going to get over the other side of the bridge and then give the others enough room to cross, but hold far and walking around until everyone's over. <laughs> so everybody just stops and we're like, hey, you're on your own. Yeah. Everyone's like, ah. you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Go guys! You're singing the song of stealth and we figure you want to do this by your lonesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <I'll> see you. <laughs> <laughs> Honest. Um, yeah. Well, I see you across, no problem. And yeah, gonna give enough space in the tunnel on this wall with the stealth that I have <laughs> shown today um, and wait for everybody else to cross before carrying on <laughs> you you guys you, you can go first says so the rather stout dwarf wearing mail <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a good plan to me <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine <laughs> intelligent <laughs> You got this. Everyone everyone who has crossed so far seems to be absolutely fine. I will attempt so to cross the bridge. <laughs> yeah, I like the way he said that. Everyone's so far. <laughs> for a swim! Can you roll for me, please, Caliban? A dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, good. 
Don't worry, I've got all the ones and twos on the way so far. Uh, no, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Caliban. Roll me another one, please. No, right, roll me a strength saving throw. Uh -huh. That's slightly more impressive. Okay, essentially what happens is, as you're watching, Caliban kind of almost overconfidently starts marching across this bridge. <laughs> The bridge itself doesn't break or anything, but the, he manages to slip on some moss where the, the thing has started to get a bit damp. It has slickened up a few of the plants that are growing on top. He slips and one leg manages to go through the rope and is dangling when he grabs onto the side rail, which is itself just a thick rope. He pulls himself back up. A little bit of wide eyes. But he steadies himself. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's alright, I'm alright, I'm alright, oh, that was planned. I'm trying to be quiet. <laughs> You're trying to be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> this is crying, an attempt is being made. Wow. I see. Well, nothing has... ...attacked us so far, so... Shall I continue? I think as well. So, probably realising that the, the tunnel starts to curve there and peering around the corner. Yeah. And Caliban, after you, I feel you'd be better suited towards the front. Sure. <laughs> Still nothing? Um, you're front. starting to hear some faint noises. Difficult right. to hear without a perception check, but you can't. You are starting to hear something unusual. Perception. I mean, what? What's the worst I could draw? Let's find out. <laughs> Figures. First one so far. <laughs> Um, you're hearing faint, high-pitched chattering in a language that I believe you're unfamiliar with. Um, it would be yes, I am. Goblin. Unfamiliar. <laughs> yeah. Unsurprisingly. Yes, I, no, I speak languages, but not that one. Um, around the corner, and obviously allow people to keep pace. Okay, you can start from here. You can see the tunnel starts to open up into what appears to be a bit more of a cavern. But it's definitely opening up into a larger room. Will it turn around and go? Um, something up ahead. Another room of sorts, and there's certainly something moving around in there. I take it looking at the ground, it's not wet up here, is it? No. It doesn't look like it's had a bath up here anytime shortly. No, I mean, there's a few patches of water here and there, but they're from faint but, drips from the ceiling rather than. But, but clearly, not clearly flooded. the flood did go through this area. No, I guess. It's not hit this place at all. Um. I don't know if they're going to be aware of what we did back there, but be prepared. Did you not hear the torrent of water? I'm pretty sure they're aware. They're waiting for us. But it's whether or not they're aware that the other chamber has been. So there are the water. They don't know who triggered that. It clearly the goblins intended to. Indeed. So where that something is in here. Are we ready? Of course. I. As will ever be. Then, leading to, obviously, to the point where the chamber starts to open up. Perfect. Walking slowly, not full speed, just in case anything does come around the corner. Okay. I'll reveal this whole cabin, because you'll be able to see most of it from down there. No, you'll probably be able to see about that much. Okay. What you walk into, and I'm going to put him here, the unfortunate bastard. Um, <laughs> what you walk into is essentially a large cave, which is divided in half by a 10-foot-high kind of ridge. 
which there are some stairs carved into going up. Um, the air is hazy with smoke of what appears to be a cooking fire. There are small rabbits and things cooking over this flame. Immediately you can see there are goblins here. One of them is very close to the entrance. He was, he was casually walking towards you when you came round the corner. Clearly checking out what the hell the noise was all about. There are at least another two you can see standing near the steps, kind of on guard. One of them has a crossbow trained towards you. The other one seems to have a rather menacing looking um, curved dagger. The one walking towards you has a knife out, but is caught so unawares. He's caught surprised by you. Oh, and probably quite importantly, actually, I probably should mention. At the yeah, very I was about to say, what's that at the back? <laughs> at the top of the... It's difficult to see perfectly from down here, but you can definitely someone in a suit of armour change to the wall at the top of uh, at the top of the ridge. Who this is and why they are there is difficult to ascertain from down here, but there is definitely a human chained up there. Human-sized creature chained up there. Guessing you want initiative, then. Unless you guys want to try the talking approach. <laughs> <laughs> Since when does that work? I mean, I thought it's... I'd offer it, but yeah, okay. Not please. so much that. It's more the fact that even if I don't, the dwarf has shown his persuasive skills previously. <laughs> Let's talk to this one. Let's not. Well then, yes, please. Run with some initiatives. That's amazing. Just like, nope. <laughs> oh, well. Are you going to talk to them? Are we fuck? <laughs> Caliban. Oh, Marilyn and then Caliban. Okie dokie. Right, let me do the thing. Because they will get that too. Not very well, though. Okay. So a couple do get to go there. I can say those two get to go there. Those two rolls. Okie dokie. As you walk in, they do ready themselves for a battle. And while they do that, there is one at the very back this one over here shouts loudly in Goblin at you. I think one of you can talk to him. Yeah, I can. Cool. You hear what he says then. He shouts. I'm gonna turn this music down. There. Uh, he does shout. He shouts very loudly at you, and you can understand exactly what he says. He says, "Truce, or the human dies!" And he turns his crossbow to point it up at the man in armor who clearly has had some of his armor ripped away at his uh, abdomen. Shame I haven't got a bloody clue and I'm going first. You are first, that is good. <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> but yeah, by all means, yeah. Tobias, you're okay. Um, doing the thing, Sean. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> no. Would anyone like to roll me a perception, please? To Who? understand what this what is going on here. When he says doing They're this thing... They're behind me. Uh, I mean... Okay, yeah, for now. Okay. Yeah. Go on, then. I, I agreed that I have a tell, and I'm happy that that... But yeah, I'm in the lead. Go on, then. You're right. Um, they wouldn't be able to see. I just almost snapped to attention. Walk in... I don't know why. I'm leaving that again. And yeah, first one. It's almost like a regimental march. In I go. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where? Ah, I've lost the thing. Goblin, where are you? <laughs> Shit. That unfortunately misses. Fair enough. <laughs> That's um, me. And it is his go. Um, cool. Oh, they got hit very hard, though. Hit 
Oh, no, that's not too bad. I mean, I don't think it's going to yeah. hit you, but... No, it's not. I didn't think so. Yeah, he tries to stab you. It absolutely misses. Uh, yeah, I just kind of roll out the way and smile down at it. The one at the back then loses his crossbow, which a bolt slams into the side of the... Oh, no. Well, no, he wouldn't be able to miss, but let's roll some damage. It does slam. It slams into the exposed side of the man at the top. And that, you know, if I actually rolled the right formula. There we go. Oh, shit. Ouch. <clears throat> and he lets out a, a horrible scream of pain. Mia, it's your go. Mia. Oh, sorry. I, I didn't sorry. hear Sean's so uh, speak. That's okay. <laughs> he cut, kind of cut out. It is your turn. Um, Okie dokie then. So, uh, if Caliban and Maron will let me, I will move past them into the cavern. Sure. About here. Awesome. I know mm -hmm. I'm just going to barge my way back. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am going to cast. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Uh, Scorching Ray. So I have three rays of fire, and I would like to target each one to each one of the goblins. Okay, okay, yep, go for it. Okay, yep. So do I need to roll three hits, or? You do indeed. I believe they're from. Are you going from the the one at the front to the one at the back? Is that the order you're going in? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Okay. That hits. One. We we've had this discussion last time. You should be adding something to this. Yeah, you should. Remember your spell oh, yeah. attack. That's yeah. the one. Okay, so add six to that one. That's not six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it still hits. Awesome. <laughs> no, that makes it not hit. <laughs> it's too high. Just too high. Yeah. <laughs> I do too good. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, you hit the first one for sure. That's because it's yeah, forward slash R. Yeah. I, also, I once you've done it once, hit once you've done it once, you can just hit up on, uh -huh. like, hit the up arrow and it does it again for you. Yeah, but we did, she didn't on the last one, yeah. so I hadn't. Yeah. Wow, okay. Second. Yeah, that hits. And just about. That's for the third. That misses, sadly. Oh, damn. So oh, you missed the guy at the back with the crossbow, but you hit the other two. Please roll me yep. some damage. Uh, on hit target, takes two, six, five. Wow. wow. That's. Do you want me to do it again for the second one? Yes, please. First one explodes in a shower of ashes. Second one does the same. <laughs> Damn. Yes. <laughs> one at the back looks very shocked. Not very happy right now. Maron, it's your go. <laughs> going to move thus far. Mm -hmm. And I will cast Suggestion on him. Okay. To him. Do the best you can to save the human at the back of the cave and defend us. Uh, is it a wisdom saving throw? Oh, yeah, wisdom save. He has to hit a 15. <laughs> okay. What, are your, what is your wisdom? <laughs> oh, it's a minus one. Okay. He fails! <laughs> okay. I'll you see his eyes soften. Uh, his eyes soften. His entire body language changes. He kind of... The crossbow droops a bit. It seems to have worked. I just say to the team, that one is our ally now. Don't hurt him. But check the room. There may be more. That's my turn. Caliban. That is your go. I will move past as far as I can to... Yeah. Uh, okay, now that how, you're that far. How, is, how injured? 
how injured does that guy look? Uh, roll me a, a heal check. The medicine check? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> I forget, you know, well, fifth, fifth edition. I play Pathfinder in the week, so I get confused. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll tell you from that, he, he's taken some damage, but doesn't seem badly damaged at all. Okay, I mean, fine. In that case, I'm going waste my space. <laughs> Is he conscious? Uh, you can't tell because he has a helm on. It's difficult to tell. You, he did make a groan though when he was shot. Well, it's kind of a given. That's the best man. Big, did you say the step up is? 10 feet. Yeah, it's ten foot. It's a ten foot climb, or you can just take the stairs. Well, obviously, that's a bit further on. No, no, no. But yeah. Okay. Stairs are for ranges. <laughs> Caravan. Anything else? Oh uh, no, that's me. I'm done. Okie dokie. In that case, at that point, the other three goblins step out from behind the corner, and will fire their bows. I was going to say, they all look suspiciously like bows. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, Thank you for the cover, Caliban. <laughs> <laughs> doing my job. First one's going to move forward and try and shoot Caliban. With a 12. Uh, no. Didn't think so. Second one's going to go for Tobias. They're 10 feet up, so that's not... Pro Whoa. Okay. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> um, do I have partial cover? Doesn't matter if it's a crit. Right? I mean... You, you would not really although he is in front of you he is a fair bit shorter yeah, and they're 10 matter. feet up <laughs> um yeah. so i'll roll let Fair me roll. d6 plus two so it would be a d6 plus two double the d6 so that's eight plus two it's t uh, ten take ten so yeah i know yeah. i know ten piercing it would be and then final one is at Oh, Mia's too hidden. Maron! <laughs> um, that hits. Yes. Okay. Four piercing damage. Bastard. And as he hits me, as my reaction, I point at him and say, Oh, you'll get yours. Like our stylish rebuke. 22 damage. What the wow. shit? <laughs> Can you read for me? Hellish Rebuke. I might have to make a hit. Oh no, one reaction is taken response to being damaged by a creature within 60 feet of you that you can see he is. Creature must make a dex saving throw. If it fails, it takes 2d10 fire damage. Oh, uh, when you're yeah, 2d10. Oh, no, because you're at higher levels you yeah. can use. Yeah, my yeah. one's level 2, so it's a yeah, 3d10. So it's 3d10. Yep, yeah, so he makes a dex throw to see if he can half it. Which is a plus two. Oops, that's a plus one. So it's 16, not not 15. If it's 16, yeah, it makes it. Okay, so he's got 11 points of damage. <laughs> okay. Even with that, the one the one that shot at you, you cast Hellish Rebuke on him and he explodes. <laughs> Literally explodes. Wow. Showering that's the one next to him with goblin guts. One time. Okay. Uh, well, shit. The goblin at the back by the stairs drops mm -hmm. his crossbow, walks up the stairs, gets about this far. The crossbow is now lying at the bottom of the stairs. The other two goblins look very confused. <laughs> uh, Tobias, it's your go. I oh, know. I'm looking at... Um, a... It's your full action, isn't it? Sorry? Yeah. So is a dash action a full action or is that your bonus action you can use it for? That's uh, full action unless you have a skill that lets you use it as your bonus don't. action. Damn it. Yeah. So hang on, I'm just doing some. Oh, yeah, need to do like some that. measuring. Oh, I did, yeah. It's alright. Oh, I mean, well. if you take. Obviously, you can take a dash action, but then you wouldn't get an attack. I know. So. Uh, so, 10 foot climb, you said, yeah? Yep. 
<laughs> Sean? Lost. Yep, that is a 10 foot climb. Right, so, <laughs> to, to clarify, from me, Pete, from there, to... ah! You know what, sod it. So, walking 10 feet to there, to get right up to the wall. Yep. What do you want, a? Eh? I, I would prefer you to want, so if that's not going to happen. It's going to be an acrobatics uh, or an athletics. Um, oh, oh, if you're going to give me a choice, can I have acrobatics, please, boss? I'll say, because you are, I mean, you are an elf. You are good at climbing trees and racism. shit. Racism. Because of racism. <laughs> I will say, yeah, you can use acrobatics or athletics for this. It makes quite a difference in the numbers. So, yeah. Yep, 15. you make it, no problem. Doesn't even count um, as so difficult terrain. So I won't even count it as a full 10 foot, I'll count it as a 5 foot. So please do continue. How I've accidentally drawn on your map. How do I undo that? <laughs> I can do that more. I, I am just right. causing Got all it. kind of shenanigans. <laughs> you're the worst. <laughs> so hang on, if you're saying 15, I can actually reach them. So yeah, um, shot me. That one there. The one directly in front of you. The one that shot me is going to have hit then last time. That's 21. Face. That hits. Damage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you cut him in half. And I'm, I'm literally just going to turn my head, tilt and smile at his friend. Can you roll me an intimidate, please? Make me to do this. <laughs> Don't you? Right, okay. Let's see if I can roll higher than the. You gotta remember, this is my dump stat, so. Yeah. <laughs> Hero! <laughs> he, he cocks his head the same direction as you and looks really <laughs> confused. <laughs> is he um, coming on to me? It's like, <laughs> is this how humans flirt? What's going on? Um, is that, is that a sex thing? Mia, it's your go. <laughs> it's always a sex thing. It's always a sex thing. <laughs> God damn, it's humans always... and elves, so depraved. <laughs> God damn, um, humans and elves. Do I have line of sight? No, I do not. No, you definitely have to move in. <clears throat> yeah, I've had a feeling I might. I do, I do that. So I am going to move there. Look at Mr. One up there and cast Fire Bolt. One. Go to do, do. Roll me into a hit. Probably. Aha. Miss. Sadly, misses. They are hard to hit creatures. Wrong, wrong, Down. wrong, wrong. <laughs> Shut Wrong, 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 wrong. So, yeah, I, I, I'm done. <laughs> okay, cool. Puff of smoke, I'm done. <laughs> Slight puff of smoke. <gasps> Wait, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> reminded him. <laughs> it, uh, and it fails. Ah. Um, <laughs> 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 gotta use them. Um, Caliban, it is your go. It is I, the chosen one. Right, uh, 15 is 25. Is... I'm going to use my dash action to do that, what I've just done there. So there, to there, and then to there. Cool, yep, yeah, not a problem. I'm using action to dash, um, but like, move there. So I'm in mm -hmm. between the goblin and the dude. Awesome. Yep, you have that, not a problem. The You haven't left this guy's threat range, and that guy's not attacking you. So yep, not a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's me done. You do that without Plus any... Plus he's holding a bow. Yes, that is true. That is true. Um, cool. Caliban, not an issue there at all. <laughs> Poor little goblins. There is one left that's trying to fight. One that it seems to be trying to help you. Um, <laughs> the goblin up at the top is looking very uncomfortable. Drops his bow. Pulls out a knife. And tries a single slash at Tobias. 
<sighs> and nope. I won't hit. <laughs> okay. Other goblin. Just parry it away with a shield. Yep, that's not. It literally is like it's so terrible. The other goblin walks over, and Taliban looks at it, kind of mis like not trusting him exactly. Oh, I totally did miss Maron's turn. Maron, I'll give you a turn after the goblin. I apologize. Basically, you know, that's cool. Like, he, we got friendly goblins, so it's out here. Oops. He basically <laughs> moves over... I'm, I'm going to move Caliban for a second. The goblin is currently oh, inside right. Caliban. Um, <laughs> the goblin moves over beside Caliban and basically takes almost exactly the same stance as him, protecting the person chained up to the wall. And yeah, that's 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 his entire turn. Malron, it is your go. <laughs> Yeah. Point at final angry goblin, and I will throw an Eldritch Blast at him. That hits. That just hits. But that hits. Uh, block. <laughs> 15 damage. Ouch. Basically, he tries to stab Tobias, and even though he misses, he starts cackling. As he's laughing, Maron throws an Eldritch Blast down his throat and it explodes from within. And that's all of the goblins that can fight. <laughs> Let's return to the ambience. It's a trap. Ah, well, maybe not. <laughs> here they are, well, goblin. <laughs> where will Top fall... of the round. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yep. Did I use my reaction if I start to see him moving toward that final goblin? <laughs> That final goblin. Possibly. So it's just it's... to shout out, please don't kill him. He doesn't want to harm us. And that, oh, that's no. another one. Um, and I am ignoring you. <laughs> <laughs> Although you do miss. You... <laughs> it. Yeah, it's not prone, is it? It's just. Um... No. He's not, no, he's, yeah. not, he's not helpless. He's just yeah. trying no, to help that's fair you. enough. But... No, in which case, yeah, that happens. Okay. Uh, Maron, you shout out, please don't hurt him. He is not trying to harm us. Tobias kind of looks over at you, grins slightly, and then tries to stab the other one with his rapier. He manages to miss, just as the goblin kind of turns around to try and help the human. Starts, un starts undoing chains, and as he moves, he kind of misses him. Um... Technically, it's Mia's go. If Mia wants to do anything. Um, well, seems how I'm close to Malron. I probably heard that message, so I'm just going to be like, yeah, okay, whatever. He doesn't seem to be harming us at the minute, but, but yeah, I shall hold my turn. Currently, he is unshackling <laughs> the man that's on the wall. Um, yeah, so I, like, <laughs> I'm not going to throw a puff of smoke down his throat. Maron, it's your proper go now, because I knocked you out of round order. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 I can't get to a good somebody. <laughs> I will try to climb the wall. See how hilarious this goes. Okay. Would it be uh, in athletics? Acrobatics or athletics, whichever one you prefer. I'll take the acrobatics. Not so parkour. <laughs> you <laughs> do not make it up the wall, I'm afraid. You start climbing, you lose your foothold and slip down a little bit. It's not harmful in any way, shape or form, but the rocks have come loose and you've tumbled a little bit. It's looking a bit frantic. He tries to climb a wall, falls down on his ass and just shouts again. Do not hurt him. He may have information. He only means us no harm. That's my turn. <laughs> Caliban, it is your go. Um. <sighs> well, to make jam. I'm so conflicted. <laughs> Must make jam. I will. I will. Uh, I won't. I will help the guy. I will help the guy. He's more important right now. Oh. Okay. Um, what are you actually doing to help him? Um, I am gonna... Can I do another medicine check on him? Yeah, absolutely. 
to see how he's how he's looking. I imagine it's pretty bad. Looking that's more like that's it. That's a bit more. Okay, now that you're a lot closer to him and can see him <laughs> better, um, yeah, he isn't looking great. He hasn't been like massively mistreated, apart from the bolt sticking out of his stomach at the moment. But he is quite malnourished. He is looking a little bit dehydrated, and there uh, there is some bruising around his face, um, you can, which you can see now that you're close through the T-shaped gap in his helmet. Is is he conscious? He is. Mo he, he is. It's difficult to say. He has eyes closed. He's breathing, but and his eyes do seem to be flickering. He does make some groaning noises. Okay. Probably. Can I treat the wound, the crossbow, and then pump my remaining ten points of lay on hands into him? You can pump your hands into him all you want. <laughs> oh, oh nigger. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, go for it. Uh, that is what I will do. I punch ten points. Into him. Okay. Do you want me to roll another medicine check for the crossbow bolt? No, or no, no that's bolt. absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. You've okay. dealt with enough of them. Um, you essentially pull the crossbow bolt out of him. He gives a bit of a like a squeaking noise, and then you focus your lay on hands at the actual site of that wound, and it knits closed. He. A lot of the bruising seems to fade. He opens his eyes slowly um, as the goblin releases the second chain on his arm. And he drops to his knees. What is going... Oh shit, there's still one of them here! And he aims a kick at the goblin. <laughs> and misses, thankfully. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, that's not a problem, Caliban. Um, the goblin doesn't even recognise the kick as being a, an, an issue and actually is trying to help the man up. <laughs> not for long. And it is Tobias's go. Good. 13. But, you know, yeah, I'll say that hits. Oh, okay. The sake of convenience. <laughs> <laughs> it's more the fact that he's not in actual combat with you anymore, so his yeah. guard's very much down, and he kind of is trying to help the man up. The man's kind of knocking him away a little bit, and then you plunge your rapier through his throat. I was about to say, that is a side on through the throat, almost at pings on the far wall. Yep. He is dead, dead. Um. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, Maron. Yeah. He's off. dead now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so I see we've got the chap. Marvellous. Oh, you could have found out so I'll, much um, of him. I'll offer my water skin to the human. I'll say, drink from him. He takes it quite eagerly, drinks from it. Although he's kind of looking around at you both now. He, he is... He seems to be trusting you more now that you've plunged a, a, a knife through the goblin's face. Um, he forces himself to his feet, hands you the water skin back. He's kind of leant against the wall slightly. Um, you, sir, are not Gundren Rockseeker, are you? His eyes widen. You know of Gundren? Were you his travelling companion? Of course, how how rude of me. He holds out a gauntleted hand. I am Sildar Hallwinter. A pleasure. Do you know where Gondrin is? Sadly, I'm not entirely sure. My belief is that if he is anywhere currently, he would have been taken by the Black Spider. What? The Black Spider is a man who has been harrowing this area. He's been sending troops against us. He has been creating problems in Phandalin. Gundren had a map showing the secret location of Wave Echo Cave. 
where we believe the mine of Fandelva is, including uh, the ancient rune forges. Right, so not in this cave with you and these things. No. We were yeah. under the impression that he was here with you. <sighs> he was brought here with me. We were attacked in the forest. The chieftain of these creatures mentioned something about splitting us up and then I took a pommel to the face. How is he, Caliban? Injured, but he can walk. Well, good, because I'm pretty sure his horse has probably gone to a butcher by now. Unless the merchant is still hanging around. Which, we did ask him nicely, so maybe he has. Yes, he may still actually be there. We found be more patrols coming back soon. We might want to get him to the cart sooner rather than later. Yes, yeah, I take it you don't know the number of <laughs> roughly. An idea we want to see how many we might have missed. Um They did not number massively here. There were more of them that went out on patrols and came back. Mariner's right then. We need to get out of here in case number return. We, we were not particularly in any state to fight and well, we can worry about the goods in the other room when we have the time and the inclination to recover them for their owner. <sighs> Orcs there, yes? Yes. Let's let letting us let us move. Oh yeah, Maron, that's not a problem. Um, unfortunately, you don't find much in the bed rolls. It is essentially a pile of goblin crap. However, you, you find one small pouch. It looks like a money pouch. And but as you open it, there's n there's one gold piece inside and three gold teeth. Yeah. The gold teeth, however, worth one gold each. So you essentially find four gold if you find someone who will happily trade them. Well, this is a bit ghoulish, but I found something worth money over here. Well, the crates in the other room are at least worth something to their owner. I think I took a name. Hang on. It's an everything. Uh, where have I written that down? The other room would that be? Blue shield lion poster? Yes. Blue lion shield. The lion shield. <laughs> yes. Poster. It was a blue that shield. Was it. That was their sign. That's it. That's, that's why you're getting confused. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But yes. It was the Lion Shield Coster, um, and they are based yeah. in Fandalin, so you would know that. Okay. Well, let's see if the gentleman with the wagon is still there. If that's the case, we can leave... This fellow with... Uh, we, let's see if we can get... I know we came through the woods, but was there a trail that led up here as well? Or was it literally just... Oh, no, it was a... I mean, although it was through the woods, the path you were following is a, was a well-trodden trail the goblins could... often used a lot. It would be easier to track your way back. Cart up here? No, but could we get the wagon up here? No. It was too narrow and too, too many right, trees okay. to get the wagon up. How big were the the crates? Um, Are they carryable? Not all of them. No, there were. Okay. I mean, when when we say there are, I mean there were like a good ten or eleven barrels, as well as a bunch of crates. That each of the crates themselves was about three feet by three feet. There, there's a lot of stuff here. 
So we're going to have to work on the assumption that we need to leave them here, let them know that they're here, and hope that they're still here when they get back for them. Okay. We, we may have wolves to contend with. Shall we leave? Yes, yeah, so I'm just right. checking the final area before we go. Anything? Oh no, that's that's exact. That's where you found the thing. Sorry, I forgot that there were two separate things of bed rolls. You, you don't find anything further. That's cool then. I'm on my way out with everyone else then. Right. Do you gentlemen and lady wish to stay back with? Uh, let's see if we find sodden wolves on the way out. Um. How steep was that? So heading back to the lower area, Sean. Mm-hmm. How steep was this bit? That was about... I mean, it was pretty steep going up, but coming down shouldn't be a problem if you're careful. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Water slide. To make my way down to here. A roll? No, I'll say you manage it. It's still pretty st I mean, it's steep and slow going, but apart from okay. counting as hazardous terrain... Um, do go as far as here. Stick my head around the corner and see if the wolves are clearly still gone. Yep, they don't seem to be back. I will ungroup you. I tried to do a thing, Caliban. It has not worked. Why am I outside? Oh god, horribly wrong. Oh god. What? Oh, they're both gone. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know where they went. Uh, stand by. Sorry, I'm confused. Are they gone? No. There is just... Okay, th the thing is being finicky. Don't move your character anymore. Let me, let me do the thing. Do the thing. I'm trying to do the thing. I don't know where he went. I literally don't know where your token is gone. Mine. <laughs> no, no. Um, planes. <laughs> Vanished in a puff of ethereal smoke. <laughs> the magic glass! <laughs> <laughs> I will find you a new token. Just a normal <laughs> he found that invisibility cloak. <laughs> <laughs> um, Accidentally <laughs> fell into it. I had it all along. I <laughs> was the bugbear. <laughs> Fools. Okay. Oh, and as we go. Wait, is Caliban carrying the warrior? Sure, let's hit <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually kind of like this one better. I'm going to give you a new one. Oh, I'm in. You're a big dwarf. Yeah, you'll need to... Let me give him. Let me give you control of him. Then you can go in and put your HP in and stuff. Yeah. Control five. He doesn't blend with the background quite so much. <laughs> yeah, and he's not... It was a weird... Okay, that token was pretty weird anyway. Okay, there we go. You can put your HP in and stuff. But yes, I was trying to group Hil uh, Sildar with you so that as you moved, it would follow you, but it didn't want to do that. And then it glitched like mad and threw you out of the screen. Sildar murdered Caliban off screen. <laughs> 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 find out he is the Black Spider. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not a problem. You managed to make it down fine. The walls don't seem to be around. You are absolutely fine. My so when you said, yes, they're still there, I'm like, is that the wolves? No, apparently that was no. Caliban who had vanished. Yeah. <laughs> that was Caliban. <laughs> Hence my confusion. Right. Um, I want to then, if they, if they have gone beyond that point, and look to see if there's noticeable tracks. Because I'd rather quite so soon. Not that you can see. Out here, it, the evidence of the flooding is obvious. Thanks for that, Mauron. <laughs> um, the the um, briars have washed slightly, uh, washed away a little bit where the wave of water had crashed into them. The river itself is, you know, slightly, slightly deeper than it was before, but not noticeably so. Everything out here seems to have washed further away slightly, and there doesn't seem to be any sign of goblins or wolves. Okay. So um, stumbles down the thing and across the water. 
Well, then, if we do want to head back to the cart and then to town... I mean, don't all speak up at once. Rest Everybody's of the players, back. what are you Good doing? I can't hear you. Who can't you hear? <laughs> you can, what? Oh no, we can hear him, like, logically. I'm oh. going back across the bridge. I'm not walking my way down that thing. Uh, okay. see him. Yeah, that sounds sensible. Uh, actually. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I'll watch out for the moss this thing. Yeah, yeah so... take like an extra two minutes, but we'll eventually catch up. Tobias, <laughs> essentially what oh, happens yeah. is Sildar seems to stumble down the thing after you. So and... are we going back to the... Where, where's everybody else? <laughs> I thought they were directly behind me. They don't seem to... Oh, oh here they come. He says as, as Maron walks <laughs> around the corner. Roll another deck save for the bridge or not? No, you'll be fine this time. Now that you know where it is, you're prepared to avoid it. Okay. Uh, so you're actually. You're all fine. Are we jumping this time. off the bridge now? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> I mean, you could. Speedy. Mia, roll me a dexterity saving throw. Ah, oh, crap. Um. Uh, oh, my dex isn't good. No, I don't want to go down that slope because that could cause problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to jump off a bridge instead. Why not? <laughs> Unfortunately, hey, I've you done it before in real jump life. Jump off the bridge, so this is now a thing. Oh, crud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, firstly, let me do this. Technically, oh, we're you're about right. here, Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> Mia jumps off the bridge while Caliban and Maron are taking the way around. Mia lands, slips, falls into the water, and is washed a fair bit of the way downstream before she recovers. Mia pulls Nailed herself it. out of hey, the water. Do I just see her go past me? You essentially... <laughs> Sildar is essentially standing there going, well, they did seem to be directly behind me. And then you hear a, a splash. Mia goes... Like rushing past you in what is essentially only about four feet of water, <laughs> rushes out of the cave, and yeah, you just see her kind of go past you. Um, um is that intentional what? or is she in trouble? Is, is she clearly flailing, or is she? <laughs> does she make grab hold of the side quite? She was flailing in initially, but you can see her pull herself to the side down here. Right. Okay. <laughs> From where you're standing, you can see Washed her right downstream. Herself. It's kind of how far does this river go? Oh no, she's out. <laughs> kind of wow. shaking her head, kind of shaking my head. And it's stupid. I mean, this eventually goes to the sea. That could have been awkward. <laughs> oh, I do like to be the seaside. <laughs> and oh, in on like literally day two, she rolls a new character because <laughs> Mia continually failed her rolls and ended up in the ocean. <laughs> Mia enjoyed her new life as a pirate after being <laughs> shanghai on the coast. It would be. It would have been about. Not gonna it would, lie, that sounds like fun. It would have been like you know four or five sessions later when she shows back up as like the new big bad and swears <laughs> vengeance. Plot twist. You joke, but Maron, Maron oh, has that, that Maron's character has had this in another campaign of mine. Haven't you, Koo? Really, yeah, my first character. Yes. Koo's first character was the party basically weren't happy with how he was acting, so were telling one of the players told the rest of the town that he was he was being horribly disrespectful. He continued to be horribly disrespectful as he found it funny, and the party and the town both ran him out of town. <laughs> this was Koo's first ever time playing D and D. It was his first ever character, and that's how he lost him. It wasn't Theron, was it? No. But he did become a bad guy and come back to haunt them later. Oh, yeah, he was not happy. <laughs> I took, I took control of him, leveled him up three levels and brought him back. Um, yeah, so you're fine. You're walking quite happily. Mia washes past you but does climb out. The other two join you soon after. Well, oh, it seems to me I wanted to take even more of a shortcut than you did. Indeed. Um... So, back to the cart, if it's still there, get the gentlemen to town, alert them that there's goods to be claimed here, sooner rather than later. Got of it? 
Not a problem. Right, let me grab everybody. Zoom out. Because now you have picked up a new person. Oh, I'm not doing an escort. I'm not doing an NPC escort mission. <laughs> Where they walk 20 feet lower than everybody else. You will be very happy to know that you do not have to do an NPC escort mission right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> as you manage to make it back to town absolutely fine, following the Goblin Trail. Um, and yeah, as you travel back, not much of a problem. Uh, you know where all the traps are. You've already kind of tripped them to kind of make them obvious and out of the way. Seldar slows you down a little bit, but not dramatically. He's like, now, thanks to the lay on hands, he's able to walk quite well. You make it back to the site of the original ambush. And although the horses and cart have been pulled over to the side, they are waiting for you. Is the driver there? Yes, he is. He, he, he kind of, you see him as you approach, cautiously peek out from inside the carriage. Once he sees it's you, he gets out quite happily. It's not the goal. Um, map yeah, he has got further in moving the horses, right? Yeah, yeah the horses are gone. Right. That's it. He's wow. eaten them. Oh, <laughs> Delicious horses. Let's get rid of the horses. It was more the fact that we've been gone hours, dude. If you haven't moved, you know, you're quite hench. If they were still there, I'd have been upset. But yeah. He's actually made a very nice business called Asda, which turns the horses into <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you had it here first, folks. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm done with horse jerky myself. But hey ho, <laughs> horse jerky. Have you heard of this substance called glue? Um, yeah. The local tannery. <laughs> he would have made friends. Yes. Um, he looks quite happy. And oh, you're back. And is that you, Master Master Holvinter? Why? Yes, you know me? <laughs> uh, you wouldn't know me, sir, but uh, you rescued my daughter a few years ago. We are the, we are the Lord's Alliance, a massive debt there in Fandolin. He bows his head slightly and doesn't say any more. Well, it seems we've been in good company. And it seems that the right is now clear. Um, If you wish to take my seat in the carriage, I'll join the driver. To town, sir. Oh, well, thank you. He um, he climbs into the carriage, sits down. The driver. On the way, you could tell us about this Lord's Alliance. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I have no problem with that. I'm quite quite keen to tell uh, adventurers such as yourselves about the Alliance. So yeah, I'll join the driver on the top there. Yep. And the other three can get in the carriage with. Excellent. In that case, everyone everyone yeah, everyone gets comfortable. Everyone is absolutely fine. They wander back through um you wander back into the carriage. Silla does talk to you a fair bit on the way there. He tells you about the Lord's Alliance. Um the Lord's Alliance is essentially a group of um allied political powers who are concerned with security and prosperity of the local area. Fandolin, he told you that Fandolin used to be a very wealthy mining town and unfortunately lately it's become less and less profitable. People there are struggling a little bit more now. Members of the Lord's Alliance ensure the safety of the cities and other settlements nearby. They proactively eliminate threats by any means necessary. That is an important part. But they focus on bringing honour and glory to their leaders and their homelands. They focus on looking after the area, and he's here in Fandolin for that purpose. But yeah, um, when you arrive into Fandolin, you arrive into Fandolin um, through the north road that I'm about to put you on. I have put a very, very obvious marker on the map for you guys to, to show you where your characters will be. It is really silly. But it's the only thing I could find that stood out against the background. <laughs> oh, here we go. Drum roll. So I apologise in advance. You will see the whole map and you are at the very top of it. You regret nothing, let's be honest. I regret zero of the things. <laughs> what the actual... <laughs> My question is why the fuck was that a token in the first place? 
<laughs> so yes. Why would it um, not be? I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> it's a very confused Easter bunny with a Christmas decoration. <laughs> and sunglasses. At some yeah, point, someone... Kind of everyone needs any, someone in a onesie, sunglasses, <laughs> and... At some point, someone made this guy. <laughs> like, let's focus on that for a second. Someone thought that the internet lacked that image. <laughs> do you know what? You Switch. Need... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you need to do an Easter one shot. Oh, uh, you guys should have seen my, my horror Christmas one shot I did. I've got all the tokens for that stuff after. I might run you guys through it at Christmas. Um. So, you show up in Fandolin. Um, the, the track you're on emerges from the wooded hill hillside and you get your first glimpse of the town. It's 40 or 50 simple log buildings. Some are built on old fieldstone foundations. Um, there are several buildings that are slightly more ruined, obviously sitting uninhabited. Um, and there are crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars surrounding the buildings. Um, this must clearly in the past have been a much larger town. And is very much as though it has shrunk slightly and some of the houses have been allowed to fall into disrepair. Many of the newer buildings are set on the sides of the cart track itself, which widens into a muddy main street of sorts as it climbs towards what appears to be a ruined manor house on the eastern side of town. As you approach, you can see children playing on the town green. There are townsfolk tending to chores, running errands. A lot of people look up at you as you approach, but they all return to their business. Sildar visibly relaxes, like his, his shoulders clearly relax. My friends, he says, let us secure some lodgings in town. I have heard that the Stonehill Inn is rather quaint. Follow me. Um, remind me, Sean, the wagon that we're on, mm -hmm. whose stuff is it that we've got with us? They are heading for Barton's Provisions, which is right here. Um, which you'll be aware of, and you will see the sign as you approach it. The wagon does pull to a stop outside of it. Okay. And the man turns, the, the driver um, actually does turn and it's almost as if he's responding to Sildar and says, I mean, I, you, could, you can head to the Stonehill, the Stonehill Inn, that's the only one in town that's worth uh, staying at, but I believe Barthen's got some money for the lot of you for escorting us here. Yes, and I'm... Obviously the map tells me, but I'm gonna, you know... I'm, I'm going to roleplay and everything. And the Lion Shield Coster, where would that be in town? Well, the Lion Shield Coster is, uh, if you continue on past the uh, past the central square, it's the first building on the right from here. Opposite okay. Town Master's Hall. You might want to talk to him at some point right. too, if you're planning on staying. So obviously we collect our um, remuneration for this task. But I also want to give them a heads up sooner rather than later that their goods are guarded. Absolutely. And then rest. But what time of day is it, roughly? Then we drink. <laughs> um, <laughs> the time of day. Agreed. At this point, you're looking. It's coming into the evening time. The so, businesses yeah. still seem to be open, but they are definitely starting to wind down the sun is lowering in the sky so yes i i think stop briefly at bath and at least to collect the, the then yes have a word with the line shield and then you're right rest and drink sildar bows his head slightly i shall go on ahead to the stone hill then and see you all there well done for comp completing your ah, first task. He smiles and starts walking off. First? I don't even want to know. Well, shall we? I assume we've got somewhere you need to park the card. Turn it to the driver. Oh, uh, I. Uh, well, if, when uh, he pulls up, kind of, he, pu he pulls over outside, basically the front door of Barton's provisions. Uh, when you head in, can you just let the man know I'm out here and he'll uh, send his hands out to get the, the items? Well, I mean... Did in, ladies and, ladies and gents? Of course, after you. 
do we, uh, do we not summon someone slightly more diplomatic? Well, like you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to take the help of you, but unless me, I'd uh, like to be talking. Uh, wow. Well, that, that's worked so well for me in the past. No, I, I, I think you better do it. Okay. At least you won't turn people to jam. <laughs> Or stab them with a rapier. Just don't turn red. Although that is a bit offensive to me, and I'll stab it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just follow, glare at Following Mauron into the provisions. Okay. As you enter, um, this is clearly a rather slightly run down store it's definitely a store that's designed more for goods and um, like more adventuring items rather than weapons or shields the shelves seem to have things like backpacks bedrolls rope rations things like that um, but yeah as you look around you can see that some of the shelves are looking rather bare behind the counter is uh, a slightly aging man about 50 years old he smiles as you come in, and where he's lent on the on the counter, he stands up more. Hello. Greetings. Uh, oh, sorry. There. Can I help you? Yes, we seem to have been used as help to deliver your goods. We were in a cart didn't realize we've actually been defending it we were told we were supposed to collect a reward here and that your cart and goods are outside <gasps> oh i can't made it through thank you the tribor trail is quite difficult at times um he he kind of he clicks his fingers quite loudly and a thistle get out here a door behind the counter opens up and two quite young but obviously quite strong young men come out they look to be in their late teens. What's up? God, there's a cart arrived. Bollocks, one says, and they both kind of walk outside. <laughs> but they shall bring the things in. Oh, we haven't had a They're delivery in quite some time. Yes, your wares do look rather lacking. And where is Gundren? Gundren has gone missing. It's in here, but it seems goblins got him on the way. I don't suppose you've heard of the Black Spider, have you? His eyes widen. We don't know a lot about him, but there have been a few bodies found in town with a spider-like marking burned into their foreheads. Ah. But Gondrin isn't here? No. We're laid on the road. Oh, he means a lot to this town. The other brothers, his uh, Nundro, Tharden. We, oh, I yes, think they're the still. Uh, the other rock seekers, I. They're somewhere outside of town. They they camped out there. I think in the forest to the south, but I'm not sure where. Hmm. Well, might be worth paying a visit to them too. We did find Sildar, who seemed to be travelling with country. He smiles again. Oh, that is good news. Sildar has helped us much, although I don't believe I've ever actually seen him myself. We have heard many tales of how he has helped this town. Ah, well, we helped him make it. He's at the Stonehill Inn now. That is fantastic news. I'll try and stop him for a drink later. Did you say this place is pretty much... Baron Bear. There's not the right word, but there are several shelves in the room that are pretty empty looking. There is still quite a lot of things to potentially buy, but yeah, it doesn't look like it's been very well stocked lately. Looking around, um, is this just because of the lack of carts? Really be good for business. Oh, partially. There's also um, an issue of... Uh, well, we don't get anywhere near as many visitors as we used to. 
Oh, really? Is there any reason for that? Well, we used to gather materials and gemstones from mines in the local area, but some of them are starting to dry up. Oh, that is unfortunate. Well, nonetheless, I flash him my signet ring. We did not know that we were meant to be... Well, it's nonetheless, I'd like to get our payment now, please. Oh, oh, of course, of course, of course. One moment, he starts rooting around behind the counter and looks around. Um, Caliban, Mia, have you come in as well? Yes. Mia? Mm-hmm. You inside too? Yep. Cool. Okay, he looks around, he, he kind of sticks his head up, counts you quickly, um, pulls out a small pouch of coins, uh, very carefully puts uh, four stacks of ten gold on the table. Well, we got enough to have a drink tonight, at least. A drink? <laughs> that should do you. That should do you a week's worth of lodgings, if not to several drinks. <laughs> a drink's only a copper piece in the Stonehill Inn. Then I might not be staying at the Stonehill Inn. Doesn't sound very nice. So it is what it perfect. is. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to just look around the room. I'm done talking to this guy now that I've got the money. Is everyone taking their stack, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, Sean? Yes? Yes, yes. Wait mm -hmm. until everybody else gets their stack. Um, Walking over to the council when there's only the one left. For the, and then looking... Was it Elmar? Yes. Did you say? Yep, Elmar Barathon. Pushing the other five back over the counter towards him and just nodding and then pocketing my money. Uh, well. I just shake my head to say, don't say anything. He bows his head slightly, kind of takes the gold off the counter. If you, uh need any supplies, please do come see me. Will do. A debt is owed. So, um, in shield. Um, I'm actually, uh, uh, Omar, have you had many dealings with the Lion Shield? Oh, not, uh, not directly. Thankfully, they're, uh, they're not rivals, exactly. They are, um, they're more uh, weapons merchants um, and those kinds of things. Not right. exactly my problem, but the lady who runs it, she's um, she's she's harsh, but I believe she's fair. Do you happen to know her name? Well, obviously, you know it's a lady, so sorry. Oh, no, that's quite all right. Oh, and the Lion Shield Costa, it's run by... Um, it's run by uh, Linen Greywind. Thank you. Um, it appears that yours isn't the only cargo that we've had dealings with on the way here. But thank you for your time. And yes, we'll have that talk. I look forward to seeing you again. While they were talking, I was just checking the room. Does it look to be anything interesting for sale here, or is it just shitty shit? Stuff you can find around. I mean, you're literally looking at the kind of, kind of things you would need to go on. Like a starting adventurer kind of day out. There are, you know, bedrolls, there's tents. Is, there's... This, is this very much, would you like to look in the player's handbook? You can have this. If it's not in the starting list, jog on. Basically in this in this shop itself, <laughs> yeah. There may be some other things behind the counter, but on the shelves, it's very much a case of stuff you would find in adventurer's packs. And the other packs. If there is a pack that you don't have that you would like items from, you can probably find it here for relatively cheap. I don't suppose you stock anything this, do you? Anything what? Sorry, you cut off at the end of your sentence there, Q. Oh, yeah, you, we just heard you don't stock any of no. this. You don't do stock you. anything well, I... more interesting than this, do you? 
Well, I have some, uh... He looks around slightly and goes, I have some potions behind the counter. I don't normally find the people that need these such things, but I, I, I have a few of those. Well, it would be interesting to see if you can bring them out. He realizes it's just, you know, a few adventures and thing. pulls out a crate from behind the, the counter, quite a small one, but puts it on the counter. There are an assortment of different potions. The most obvious one that you will recognize are healing potions. But there are a few other ones there that look a little bit more exotic. Oh, I'm not sure what these are. I'll point to all the exotic ones. What might they be? To be honest, some of them I'm not even sure what they are. Good luck with that. <laughs> I will try to examine them then. There is a, a, a rather interesting selection of different ones. Can you roll me an arcana, please? Uh, this should be fun. Oh my god, I've actually got some arcana for once. Hmm. Do you normally play the... Uh, I normally play a smashy smashy character, barbarians, fighters, <laughs> monks. <laughs> yeah. I see other spellcasts. Can I also uh, do arcana? Yeah, absolutely. Do a try and back him up a little bit. <laughs> please do pretty sure I think they're all water and it's not good for me. <laughs> Very shiny water. <laughs> That's oh, better. That's <laughs> Maron, you have a quick glance over them and you're... Although you recognise that they are definitely magical potions, you're not... You haven't got a clue what they do. Um, Mia, you see a few that are a little bit less common. There are, there are a few potions of climbing... There is a couple of potions of animal friendship. Um, there is a potion of um, water breathing in there. There's a potion, one single potion of gaseous form. There are a few that you still don't recognize, even with that roll. Okay. I'm just going to whisper over to me. Do you know what any of these are? They all mm. just look like nothing to me. Well, um, th there are a few that I'm not quite sure of, but I'm pretty sure that one in the back will let you climb better. I think the one in the foreground is uh, you be friends with animals. Oh, and that sounds two... delightful. Right, all right, totally. And the two on the left, I think, will let you breathe underwater and turn into a gaseous form. I think we've already got someone who can do that. I nice shoot Tobias a look. <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't know what you With find, that, <laughs> Don't, don't know what you find so hilarious. You've just told the shopkeeper exactly what his potions are. He now knows what they were. Indeed. And you told him a bunch of merchandises from the Lion Shield Costa. We're all having fun moments. We're all just friends. Relax. And I'll pick up the potion of animal handling. How much for this one? That is a very good question. <laughs> it is why he asked it. <laughs> Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Um, for that one, I'd say about seventy gold. Um, you'll know that as being relatively cheap for this kind of potion. Oh. Potions in 5th edition are <laughs> disgusting, aren't they? I think. Uh, like, literally, a common potion, like a potion of healing, is, is relatively cheap because the, you guys need them, generally. They're about 50 gold. A, once you get to start kind of second level spells and above in potion form, they're between 200 and 500 gold, usually. And he's trying to sell you one for 70. Any chance I could lower the price a little bit with some trade? It depends on what it is you've got to trade. I bring out a Morning Star, a Scimitar, a small bow, black feathered arrows, and three <laughs> gold teeth. He looks over these things. 
picks up one of the gold teeth, looks you in the eye, looks back to the tooth, puts it back <laughs> down. Well, this is a fine uh, gathering of items. Uh, none of them are really... I suppose... Oh, I could melt these down. Out of all of the things you provided, it's the teeth he seems to take. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, at least I got my four gold out of those. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I suppose I could sell you it for 50 gold then. Oh, very nice, I'll take it. He doesn't know what he's doing, and this is why he's not got a very good shop. I mean, what? <laughs> Mark, I like him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he will sell you the potion of animal handling for 50 gold. Sweet. The other ones. Anybody else shopping, or shall we go get that drink? Turn to it, then yes, the drink. And I shall leave. Okay, okay. Out of the, the shop. Controlled by everyone. Right, you can all move the funny pink man. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, where you're choosing to go now, I will let you move him as a sort of marker around town. <laughs> well, it, you don't off to get... All I'm going to do at the Lion Shield is advise them where the goods are. Isn't that great? Otherwise, it's up to you. Nothing was. Well, I'm quite happy to do our work before we head to the inn. Might get some more money for that information. Fair enough. So, is Caliban, Mir, are you joining us? Oh, well, may as well. So, apparently, we're going here. I feel bad just moving that figurine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I provided you with that. The, lo the last time I played this, I gave them like a skull and it looked all menacing, so I've gone the exact opposite direction this time. You have very much gone the opposite <laughs> direction with this one. <laughs> Well, the thing was, the skull was actually quite hard to see. It's just spinning around on the fucking spot now. I can't do it. I can't look at the screen right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, as you approach it, hanging above the door is of the, a rather modest looking trading post is a sign shaped like a wooden shield, blue with a golden lion on it. Exactly the same symbol you saw before. Um, as you go in, this shop seems like there are a few people in it walking around looking at things. There are, at this point, you can see there's a few things like swords hanging in racks. There's a few suits of armor in here. This seems to definitely be more of a um, armor and weapons supplier. And you you hear her before you see her. A rather sharp-tongued woman. Oi, you! Get out of here right now! Go get... No, fuck off! She kicks a guy in the butt and he like falls out of the shop past you. Don't fucking come back in here again. Try and touch those things without even fucking showing me some gold. Bastards. <clears throat> well, that's... A... You and me are going to be very good friends. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> she looks you up and down. This is like a giant Spain staring. A woman. Oh, God, I can't remember giant woman's name anymore. Oh, Tormund and Brienne. Oh. Yeah, staring at Brienne. <laughs> oh, we are, are we? She looks you up and down. Does look like you'd be interested in some of the stuff in here. Your armour is looking a bit shabby. Uh, do you want to tell her or should I? What, the, your armour is shabby? No, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> About her goods? Um, I believe that we are addressing the master of, the, of this place. Um, Lenin, I whisper. Yes, I'm being polite. You told me to be polite. I'm trying to be polite. What's the problem with that? I'm sorry, what is it you can... Uh... Mrs. Greywind? Oh, the name's Lynn N. Greywind. She holds out a hand. Uh, Tobias. Um, it's a strange thing that we have to tell you. Um, There's no simple way of putting this that doesn't sound dubious to begin with. Um, have lost some... You've had some goods taken from you, I believe. 
We've had several of our shipments not come in. Few of them get through. The more, the more uh, I, I spend on uh, oh, what are they fucking called? The people that stick with the shipping carts. We discovered where your goods are being kept. We, on other business, came across a location, dealt with the occupiers, and have found uh, a number of shipments marked with your seal. Um, unfortunately, we are poor people on foot. We weren't particularly able to get a cart to where it is. Um, but we thought, at least at the moment, while the place is unguarded, to come and speak to you to advise you where they are. You have a map? Depending on the reward, of course, I interject. Oh, <sighs> oh if this, uh, if this uh, information is good, I could throw a good 50 gold your way. Not a problem, not a problem. But that's... Uh, she pulls out a dagger. Starts, like, cleaning her nails with the very tip of it. That's, of course, if the information is good. I, th I, th I look in a Maron. I thought I was the one that lacked. Uh, anyway. A map, Mistress Greywind. Do you have one? I, she pulls um, a small, what well, looks like a small notebook out of um, yeah. a pouch. Opens it. Back two pages are a map of the local area. Right. Reading through my bag, I've got effectively a pencil. And I'm going to best as I can, from what I remember from tracking to it, draw a description or basically mark the trail um, between to where we found the cave. Um, I will advise her that there was at least two traps on the way which have all been disarmed. Um, that in the cave itself it was occupied by goblins and a few other creatures and that they were either all dead or fled. We were last there earlier in the day, but that doesn't mean that there isn't the potential of goblins coming back. But we do know that the the leader, at least, is dead. The dagger that she's got in her hand, Thank she you. kind of turns in your direction. And how do I know you're not a red brand fucking with me? That I'm a what? A red brand? It's a red... Consider me ignorant in this matter. Ah, you're not from around here then. Her entire demeanour seems to change. She seems to relax her guard. She actually sheathes the dagger. <sighs> the uh, there's an there's a, a an, another inn in town that's not really used. The Sleeping Giant. They've kind of set up in there, but they've also taken over the. You've seen the big manor house when you came into town. They've, uh, I admit I wasn't paying too much attention, but uh, if you I go, if, it, it, as soon as you step out of here, you'll see it. it's up on the damn hill over to the east. Tresendar Manor was in the past a beautiful manor house. Now it's a pile of shit with the red brands infesting it. They rough people up in town, make a lot of the businesses pay Gone. for protection. Gone. Sorry, mate. Again, echo from someone. Yeah. From your one, there's feedback. Okay, is I think it might be Mia's. Oh, is it mine? Sorry. That's okay. Uh, I'm on. That's alright. <clears throat> Try again. Aye, they. Chosen yeah, Manor it was. absolutely Sorry. full of red <laughs> brands. Absolute bastards they are. They're little ruffians. Like, beat people up, take money, little shit and things like that, but they ask for the businesses in town to pay them for protection. And if they don't, like I don't, they fuck with you. Trust. Oh, so my associate immediately asking for a reward within an instant of telling you that you lost your goods perhaps looked a little bit... <laughs> Suspicious, I... yeah. Yes. Though I don't well, we blame you for trying. I am a businesswoman and I totally understand. Yes, those of us that actually do business and look him up and down. My <laughs> no, family do business. Indeed. 
Right, here's the deal. I'm going to give you 50 gold. I'll give you 50 gold right now. And if I if I send my men out to get them, and there's nothing there, we come back. We take parts that you might not want to lose. Sounds wonderful to me. On my hand, take off my brother's signet ring and place it on the counter and go, it's collateral. <laughs> Keep it. She throws it back. And believe me, that means enough to me that I'll be back for that to prove that my word is true. Nah, keep it. You're willing to actually try and offer something. That kind of shows me that you're not one of those bastards. Fuck it here. She, without even counting it, she reaches into another pouch, pulls out a small bag, hands it over to you, Tobias, and there is 50 gold within. Don't cross me. But you may have made a friend today. Thank you. I hope that that all your goods uh, as I say we cleared it out but that doesn't mean that the things won't be back hence why I wanted to come to you before it got dark give you as much lead time before anything returns if anything returns well you've got the 50 gold now and if we find them and everything's fine you have a friend in me I'll give you a discount in the shop thank you she looks around that goes for the lot of you even you she looks at Caliban Ouch. Kind of bandage. Kindly nod one. at her. Are you there, Caliban? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I was just thinking about ale. <laughs> <laughs> then let's go get some, shall we? Um, and on that I, note, we're going to take a quick step. five minute break. Sure. Cool. Um, so, yeah, we'll have a quick five minute break. Um, everyone grab drinks, bathroom, that kind of shiz. We will be back at 10 to 10. Mm -hmm. And yeah, talk to you wonderful people very shortly. See you in a
Hello, beautiful people. We are back and we are ready to rock. Um, Skelly King has just asked, I like the stream, when is it usually on? Um, my stream is pretty much every night from about 9 British Standard Time, but um, Monday and Tuesdays are the Dungeons and Dragons days. Thursdays and Fridays I play games. Um, but yeah, I have a I have a schedule up on my Discord if you want to go pop into Discord, it's a great place to see it. Um, we're going to keep going till about 11 tonight. And we usually go from back. You're ruining to the... everything for everybody because you're off to America. I am ruining everything for everyone because I'm going to America to see my mother <laughs> and my little brothers. Hello, That's Koo. fair enough. Koo is one of my little brothers. <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. You can stay in England. Oh. <laughs> oh <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's all right. I just wrote. I just wrote on his character sheet. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, if you want to watch any past games, they're all on my YouTube. Um, so the first, this is only the second time session we played of this one. That's all. The first one is on YouTube, um, and all of the Curse of Strahd ones, which I play on Monday, which is a horror D and D game, um, are all on YouTube as well. But there is about to be after this week, there is a three week gap before we come back. So I'm sorry, but I am on holiday. So in that time, I'm only going to be doing um, IRL streams, which is what they're called on Twitch now. <laughs> And just showing people America. I'm going to the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, which goes on for like a fucking month. So I'm going there for, for, for a day. So I'm actually I thought that. you were going to say the entire three weeks. That's all you're there <laughs> just, for. Just, <laughs> Hi, mother. Goodbye, mother. Um, just icy all the time. It's 35 acres of Ren Fair. It's fucking ridiculous. Like, so many. That's pretty boss. Oh, I can't wait. I'm really excited. Uh, me and my great mobility is going to love it. Um, but, yeah. So that's how often we run. We run quite often. But yeah, we are absolutely going to... Oh, Eschatonic. I really want to know what a Renfair looks like in real life. I can kind of give you an experience. Like a GoPro experience of the event. But yeah, they're really cool. They're very different in America to what they try and do with them here. Because they're, they're, almost, they're almost LARP events even. Like loads of people dress up and be in character and stuff. Um, but yeah, we're going to get cracking back with the game. The party has just done a nice a nice little bit of a dealing in the Lion Shield Costa. They've got a 50, another 50 gold that they may or may not um, share. As we step <laughs> out. As, as I step out, yeah. Hang on, give me time. <laughs> Jeez, you people. Um, as we step out, Tobias starts reaching into the pouch, um, pulls out 13 gold, hands it to Maron, same to Mir, and same to Caliban. Oh, thank you, pal. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Sorry, was that 13 on 3? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I haven't somehow magicked 90 to hand out to people at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure of the original amount. <laughs> I mean, you gave away half of your winnings last time. You can give us your winnings You don't know that. No, no, you know that. <laughs> He Damn purposely, it. Okay. yeah, no. He purposely I waited can... until you all weren't looking before he slipped the five gold back. Oh, I, I made sure that. everyone else. Yeah, no, I did say everyone. I wait till everyone else takes their share, yeah. and then I positioned myself between and you lot, and that's when I did that. So, as far as you're aware, I took my cash. Hola. Sweet. So yeah, um, I believe drink was next on the agenda. Hey. <laughs> but which inn are we going to? What, what, well, there's the one where apparently... The dirty one, or the really dirty one? <laughs> <laughs> the one, the one with our associate, or the one with the social pariahs that we just got threatened because they thought we were part of them? Hey, that one. <laughs> <laughs> For one, I'm more inclined to join our companion from the road. I, I, I don't right. wish to sway your choices, but there we go. Go on, here it is, Sam. Hey. I believe so. Okie dokie. I like the stone hill, then. Um, where is where are my notes on the stone hill, then? That is the question. Same. I go all the time. <laughs> I don't. So, in the, in the centre of town, like, you just basically, you come out, turn left, there's the large uh, town square with a, with, um, a shrine in the middle. Where there is a woman uh, cleaning what looks to be a, some kind of statue. 
you head past that and towards the stone hill inn, where there is a large, very relatively newly built roadhouse of field stone and rough hewn timbers. The common, uh, as you like, head in, the common room itself is full of locals nursing mugs of ale, and they eye you curiously. I got a picture for you guys, and I got music specific for the end. Oh, why the fuck not? <laughs> so yeah, this as you walk in, there is um, a small band playing. A small group of bards are up on a slightly raised platform. There are waitresses walking around, mugs of ale handing out the usual kind of things. There is a rather young-looking human male standing behind the bar, clearing a glass, who looks over at you, bows his head slightly in a nod. Sildar Hallwinter is sitting at the bar currently. What would you all like to do? Freak out ever so slightly because I recognise this visual of a bar. <laughs> is anyone else getting a peculiar sense of deja vu? <laughs> for Blaine's, for Blaine's benefit, this is the same bar that we all got pitched up on watched in our the beginning. Video, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I forgot I'd use it for both. It does not look exactly the same. I promise. Good. <laughs> Hang on. But it's enough. We never left the town. <laughs> <laughs> you've been, you've been in the town all along. Um, <laughs> I will head over to the bar. Okay. Mike. So. Okay. I will follow. <laughs> mm -hmm. As you approach, tap the bar twice. Drop my coin purse on the bar. Say, so, we would like some lodgings if that's okay. Man looks up. Why would you? <laughs> I thought that I can do if you got the coin. He holds that. He, he finishes clearing the glass, sure. kind of rubs his hand on his shirt a little bit. Holds out, holds out his hands here. I will shake his hand. <laughs> my name's Toblin. Toblin Stonehill. This here is my establishment, and. Uh, We've uh, we've got five rooms left. This uh, gentleman here just took one. Uh, do you want one for each of you, or uh, a few are you sharing? He looks at me. How the, much uh... are they? <laughs> oh, gold a night. Depends how long you're staying. I can do. Uh, I, I can definitely throw your uh, throw your deal if you're going to stay for long. Yes, I'll take one of my own, please. Sorry, I, I missed that. What was the... Yes, I think I'll take one of my own, please. No. All the night. So, so, let's talk a deal. So, there's four of us. That's four gold a night. How many is that a week? I'm not great with numbers. <laughs> <laughs> let's call it 25 gold for a week right now. Ah. For, for the lot of you, you want four rooms for a whole week? Yeah, sure. Uh, just in case. Uh, not used to that. He, just, he quickly doing some maths on his fingers. Uh, well, it'll normally be almost 30. I, 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 I'll tell you what, throw me 20 gold, I'll give you four rooms for the week. Uh, deal. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to quibble over that. Uh, um, <laughs> 20 gold. This 20 gold is coming from the party funds that I've taken. Maron's just That's looking fair. between Caliban and the bartender. What yeah. idiots. Oh my god. Well, <laughs> I am. Um, so yeah. I am I'm letting this slide. <laughs> <laughs> I am not considering maths at all. The bartender <laughs> takes the 20 I'm gold. Looks absolutely dead chuffed. Uh, you throw me another five. I'll. Uh, I'll include breakfast, lunch, and dinner for you. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> he looks Didn't like he's in a corner of drink. Oh, anyway. He literally looks you looks you <laughs> over like he has just tricked you out of a shit ton of money. He's like look, absolutely pleased with himself as he pulls it back behind the bar, pulls it all into into like a small pouch. Well, 
Well, I think I'll, uh, first round's on me. What are you having? Uh, ale. The best wine you have, please. Oh. Two wines, please. <laughs> and a water. Ha! That's the, probably the least what? requested drink I get in this place. It's doable. I'm just surprised. He fills a tankard of ale, puts it in front of um, Caliban. It is pretty grim. However, the wine he pours is... The, the label of the bottle is clearly written in Elvish. And it is a deep scarlet red and very pleasant. He then has to go, literally leave the bar and go into a back room to bring out a glass of water. <laughs> It's clear, right? It, it actually, surprisingly, Just to yes. Clarify. The, the, the kind right, of okay. he brings it out in like a, a glass stein as well, and the glass stein itself is pretty clear. It's very it, you would expect it to be dirty and gross. So yeah, it's, it's pretty clean. Sildar here was telling me you saved his ass. Yes, that I did. All me. I mean, they helped. I mean, it was a group effort. Well, he did jellies and goblins for sure. And in fact, he healed the gentleman in question. Aye. Well, we like to definitely like to hear that uh, goblins are going squish. That's a fantastic thing to hear. If you want to come uh, crush some people in the other in up the road, and I'd be really happy with you. What, the Red Brands really do not have a good rapport with the public, do they? Oh, no. <laughs> the Red Brands are assholes. <laughs> they uh, tried to drive me out of business several times. They uh, think it's uh, clever to try and get into me, what, me stores at night and smash through the barrels. Of course, I've been putting empty barrels in there these days. They are not too happy with that. But they, they do. They hassle people. They... Uh, Mug people, make people feel very uncomfortable, and the town master's doing fuck all the stuff. And... and I understand from Mrs. Gray that they're at the mansion, she said? Aye, we do see them. I mean, they, the, the ones that we tend to deal with tend to be in the uh, Sleeping Giant. It's a right. few doors down on this road, but they, they are constantly sending things back and forth up to the manor. And th there seems to be more that come out of the manor than actually go in. I'm not sure how that's possible. Clearly in a, a different exit from somewhere. But... So, how long have they been here? Oh, a few years now. It came, it, it started quite, um, it started quite almost innocently. A few of them moved into town and said they were, you know, Looking to help protect us from the orcs to the to the east and the, some of the goblins that had been attacking. At, at the time, we thought they were just a group of adventurers, and then more and more and more started showing up. And Tresendar Manor has been empty for a while now. They filled that up, and the Sleeping Giant Inn they took it over pretty quickly. There's nothing we can do about that. But the more and more come in, the more trouble they cause, and a few of us wanted and tried to stand up against them at the beginning, but I've got a wife and two kids. There's only so much I can do. Has... I've forgotten his name now. Is Sildar being silent throughout all of this? Is he just... He has been. You know, He's been clearly listening, raising an eyebrow for now and again and stuff, yeah. but... But um, he hasn't said anything, no. Pointedly looking at him and go, so you're feeling slightly more recovered now? It's amazing what a bit of a sit down and a tankard of ale can do for you. That's not being tortured by a bunch of goblins for their own. That is also true. I'm very appreciative of all you've done for me. Thank you. 
Well, you're welcome. If you require me for any of the potential excursions you may go on in the near future, I will be... What is your story, Caliban? The rest of us have all met each other before. We know a little of each other's backgrounds. Where do you hail from? From Adbar, the citadel of the dwarfs. I was trained under the uh, under the priests of Muradin there. In turn. Well, it doesn't have to. There are many things you could do to better the town while listening out for what could be Gundry's fate. I don't believe they were planning on killing him, only moving him. There was a goblin that we interrogated prior to finding their hideout. He suggested that one was taken and one was kept. We assumed taken meant, well, are you saying that we're captives of this other location? Well, it, it, I believe that there are 
forces at work around here that all seem to be conspiring to make life very difficult for people who could potentially stumble upon the location that Gundren had potentially found. He says very pointedly. Mm. Not saying the name. Yes, the individual that you mentioned links somewhat to an individual that I have an interest in. At least in name. This is fair. It does seem that most of Gundren's problem come from a gentleman I believe the townsfolk called the Black Spider. And he seems to be part of our problem as well. Done a bit of research on that young lady that we dealt with previously. And that is kind of a motif, I don't know. It could be a coincidence, but Gundren seemed to think it was enough to... Yes, he said as much to me. Well, found the best way to deal with problems is to make allies. With that, I dropped 20 gold on the table and saved the barkeeper. Everyone in here drinks free for the night. Sure. 20 gold will just about cover that. Oh, for goodness sake, the shopkeeper <laughs> suggests it's roughly a copper. <laughs> he, he takes the 20 we're, gold. <laughs> we're well aware that you have made a profit this evening. No one has got a qualm about that. But don't make it think that we're doing you a favour, dear boy. Or you're doing us, us a favour, dear boy. You don't appear to be stupid, fellas. But, uh... The money you're flashing around in here, careful who else sees it. Don't get me wrong, I know you're, uh... Overpaying for a few things. Let us just suggest that from what we understand, there's two establishments in town and it would be nice that this one made a profit for a change. That's much appreciated. Besides which... Besides what? You announced what I just did. I'd much prefer if you actually did announce to the tavern what I've just done. Tell them exactly how much I paid. Go walk over to the bar. Well, uh, all right. <laughs> hey, everyone. Apparently you drink free tonight. This one gentleman has just thrown 20 gold at me. There is a massive, massive cheer and a rush of people coming towards the bar. I'm going to step out of their way. <laughs> Same with me, and I'd bring my wine with me. I would I say... i just raise my glass for a second and throw a bunch of coppers to the bards. Any requests? Play free birds. The reigns of Castamere. <laughs> I don't oh, know. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, uh, I will look for a trap. Apparently Freebird. <laughs> Actually, I was like, play Freebird! Um, you want the reins of Castamere? Hell yeah, if you can do it. That's not going to get in trouble with people, is it? Twitch don't mind. YouTube might have trouble. Uh, it's okay, yeah. YouTube will probably let me just mute this one bit. Gets a little bit teary eyed and like, I don't know why I'm upset, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are literally people like, like, they're starting to drink. There's like obviously free drinks being handed out now. People are like swaying together, humming along. It's all getting rather. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Okay. Yeah. You're absolutely well covered in the bar for the night. People are drinking, getting quite rowdy, getting quite happy. There's a lot of people talking. Could everyone please roll me an investigate roll? And I'll explain why in a second. Well, everybody. Everybody who is in this bar. I haven't buggered off just. Maron's plan, so I'm glad he's paid attention. <laughs> Hello, He's getting everyone drunk. No, actually, <laughs> everyone overhears something. But this is more, this is this is less about who could hear something and more about... Of, uh, there was literally a miner sat at the bar not far from you um, talking about the orc raiders that have been seen at the east end of the Tribor Trail. Apparently, and this is where your ears really prick up and you start paying attention, the town master has offered a decent reward for anyone that can clear out the orc raiders. Okay. Malron. You get chatting to the innkeeper's wife, Trilena. Oh dear, this sounds badly. <laughs> 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 and this is how the children happen. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of little demon children, let's do this. Oh my god. <laughs> Trilena Stonehill talks to you about a local woodcarver, a man named Feldrender. He stood up to the Red Brands ten days ago. They came to his shop and had been leering at his wife and making some rather horrific comments about what they would potentially do with her. It's... He stood up to them at this point. And at that point, they beat the hell out of him, and then murdered him in the town square in front of everyone. Wow. That was bad, man. The Red Brands took his body. His wife, daughter, and son have now been missing for about a week. Um, Mia, you hear an old farmer talking mm -hmm. about the woman who? who... Mia, this is Mia. Yeah. This is for Mia. Yeah, Mia, I think you've still got a bit of feedback coming off something. Oh, do I? Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll mute. I can still hear you guys, but if you could, um... That's yeah. okay, that's fine. Put it in the chat, that would be great. Okay. Um, you essentially hear, get talking to one of the barmaids. She's very gossipy. She's talking about a lot of the local things that are happening. The man who runs the orchard in town, Daran Eldermath, he is a former adventurer himself. The whole town is quite curious about him, as he has been he has been growing sorry not Eldermath, Edermath. He has been growing things in the orchard for quite some time, doesn't seem to age much, and is rumoured to be one of the last great heroes of the area. Finally, Tobias. Mm-hmm you get the information about the Shrine of Luck just outside. Okay. Not anything massively interesting, sadly, but you do hear that the woman that you saw cleaning it earlier, her name is Sister Garayel. Okay. She didn't seem much of import to you when you saw her. But you hear rumours about that people are over talking, uh, talking about where she seemed to have been essentially a... She is a sister. She is someone who they essentially thought was 
nothing more than a nun of sorts. She cleans okay. the shrine of luck. She keeps it well, well looked after. She prays at it quite often. And when people leave offerings, she is the one who tends to um, remove them and move them on to where they need to go. However, a few days ago, she left town. Okay. She's gone for a few days, which is usual. She does seem to leave town quite often. However, when she returned, she was exhausted and quite badly wounded. Okay. Which, for the local, like, essentially a nun, quite surprising. They've not met Sister Jude. Sister Jude is a, very much an exception. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay. But yes, that is just, as the night wears on, these are bits of information you pick up that you think are noteworthy, everyone. I, I'm not going to interrupt the conversation too much, but I am going to kind of, but obviously while the drink's flowing, inquire at least if they know if the, the poor woman got medical assistance when she came back. Oh, she only returned yesterday. She's been in her house ever since. It's uh, just behind the shrine. Won't answer the door. Well, the, the no. Door, she, she, she answers. Not lying. She verbally right, okay. answers. She won't open. Fine. So she's not lying unconscious no, behind the no, threshold. No, we would have dealt with it if we thought she was dying. No, she shouts out to no. us, but she won't open the door to us. Okay. Not a matter of immediate. Let's not go to sleep in case she dies in the meantime. Right? Okay. No, that's just weird. She's, she leaves yeah. town a lot, but for her to come back hurt, I mean, who would want to hurt a sister? True. The fact that the gossip ended with, oh yeah, and they were bleeding. I'm like, hang on. <laughs> this is fair. I take it the night is drawing on. The night is drawing on. It's getting very late now. So we're talking about it being, you know, considering the time of the morning you got up this morning, we're now talking about it being about around midnight, one in the morning. Yeah. Time for bed. Well, the the rooms are prepared. If you wanna, if you wanna head up, I believe that is the case. Um, okay, would anyone like to do anything else before bed? Because other than that, I think we can go to sleep. 
I am going to do the mysterious thing that I mentioned to you on the break. <laughs> yes. I can't can. believe that I am selling this as a as a big secret, but yeah, I'm going to do that before bed. There are facilities in the inn for that to occur. Okay. You managed to catch the 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 uh, innkeeper's yeah. wife on the way, and she explains how that works and where to go. Thanks. Excuse me. <laughs> um, it sounds a lot more clandestine <laughs> than it really is. My, my the apologies. The big reveal is such an anticlimax. No, Did believe we walk me. into a brothel? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was more the fact of the innkeeper's wife told you where to go and what to do. Um, yeah. Jesus. Exactly. No, no, it's all will be revealed in about the next 30 seconds and it's going to be a massive disappointment. I don't want to watch that. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Touche. Fair enough. Yep, yeah, she absolutely instructs you where to go. Would anyone else like to do anything? I have whispered. Oh. Ooh. I am going to bed ah! my wine. Okay, can everyone roll me a perception, please? Gonna oh, sneak into Christ. someone's room and play silly pranks on them. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, so, all right. Let's just... Perception. Sorry, I was doing it in Twitch. <laughs> yeah. That everyone roll perception. Yep, everybody. Okie dokie. And, yeah, no, actually, it's just Mia. Shit. Mia, you feel what appears to be a weird... A, kind of like a small hand touch your shoulder. But as you turn around, there's nothing there. It's Sorry, like... you broke up with it. just a weird hand on my shoulder. Yeah, you're a small hand. It's definitely not fully human-sized, but it's, it's an instant. And as you turn around to look, there's nothing there at all that could well just have been in your mind. on the kind of upper corridors leading to the bedrooms, we'll say. Cool. That's okay, it doesn't, well, affect, that... it doesn't even affect the rest of you. Tiny little ghost babies. <laughs> Not my strong head. <laughs> oh, no. Just a ghost brothel. <laughs> a ghost brothel. A, a ghost brothel. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, now we're all suitably fricked. <laughs> I'm not typing things, shush. Okay. <laughs> Would you like to describe what you're doing? Would you like to keep it secret for now, Tobias? Um, well, are, are we playing on for a little bit longer? We're probably going to stop. Bef we're probably going to stop before we wake up in the morning. We'll probably start next time waking up in the morning. No, in which case I'll try and remember what the hell I did in three weeks' time. Well, I'll, I'll know what I did in three weeks' time because I've made the adjustment. Okay. Just... Absolutely fine. In that case, everyone, that is where we're going to end for the evening. Um, Becca's added the quote: "The bartender's wife told you where to go and what to do." God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Do the creepy well done, kid Becca. Well done. <laughs> oh, sorry, Skelly. I don't have the creepy kid music in this version of the game. That's only in Curse of Strahd. <laughs> I've set up all of the music for both of the games. In Curse of Strahd, there is this horrific thing I use, which is basically a bunch of what sound like ghost children screaming. It's pretty horrific, but it works really well with Curse of Strahd and certain things that have happened. It's a it's a fucking oh, horrible game. I can't remember what I was watching the other day, but they said. There is nothing that you can't make creepy if you don't have children softly singing Frere Jacques over the top of it. <laughs> oh my god. Genuinely, because as someone who, as a primary school teacher, was formerly a choir master in primary schools, children singing can be fucking creepy. 
Oh, yeah. I that. That's one of the late night talk shows. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, they've basically gone. There is nothing that you can't make creepy, and let we with small children singing over the top of it. Put on like two happy children playing in a car, and it was creepy. To be fair, do you know what else <laughs> can be pretty creepy? Oh, that's it. John is... Oliver. Oh. John Oliver. Yeah. And yeah, it I think is. um, I think what else does a really good job of that is um, music box music. Fucking horrific. Box music? Oh yeah, that does sound pretty damn creepy as well. And yeah, Tobias ha Tobias Tobias has done that in real life in a LARP game he runs. What was that? Music box music that kept showing up like fucking no creepy nursery rhyme music playing in the background. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, you missed the first event. There was Ring Ring of Roses and everything. Fuck's sake. Yeah, no, that was. And there was just. We had speakers playing the sound of children's laughter coming out the walls. God damn it. That is a delight to make people freak themselves out on the first night of an event. <laughs> because it was a usual thing that it wasn't going to happen until about midnight, but Pete got bored about 10 o'clock and went, everyone's bored. <laughs> Classic Pete. <laughs> Classic P. <laughs> Let's escalate because I'm worried that they're not having fun. We this is the first event, Pete. We don't need to traumatise them already. No, no, we do. It's kind of oh god. Okie dokie. Um, that's where we're going to end tonight. People at home, thank you very much for hanging out with us. Um, there is going to be a is it three or four week gap now. One, two, three. Oh, I can play on the twenty second if you guys are all available for the twenty second. Yeah, I'm happy to. Be. Is that 22nd of August? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, should be. Cool. In that case, everyone, we should be back in three weeks. The Curse of Strahd game is going to be four weeks, as one of the players isn't there the week I get back. Um, but yes, so that's D&D &D, D &D done for a few weeks. I will be back on Thursday for my birthday stream from 8pm uh, British time. Yay! So I'm going to be playing uh, Near Automata, which Becca bought me for my birthday, um, and just chilling out and having fun with the birthday stream. So yes, that should be fun. And then I will be gone for three weeks. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, my wonderful players. I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Indeed. I have. It's been emotional. It was drink. And yes, we will pick it back up. You've hopefully got a lot of threads now you can potentially follow because at this point the game mm -hmm. it's been a bit linear so far to get you in but now it's full sandbox mode you guys can do what yeah. you want so i'm excited to see what you guys decide to investigate and what order you do it in Sweet. sounds oh. fun awesome in that case i will say good night to my wonderful players good night to the people at home and this is clockwork sj signing out for the evening to Brains of fucking customer. <laughs> yeah. Nothing symbolic at all. <laughs>